Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with Belfast, Ireland-based, best-selling author of Going the Wrong Way, Chris Donaldson. When he left Belfast in 1975, his original plan was to ride to Australia, but he never made it, ending up in Argentina nearly two years later. He rode across the Sahara Desert, traveled through Africa to Cape Town, where he hitched a ride on a yacht race back to Europe. He then went to the U.S. and rode Canada South through Central America and South America to Buenos Aires. All of this and more is in his Amazon best-selling book, Going the Wrong Way. He decided to finally complete the journey 42 years after his return from South America to take the same Moto Guzzi to Australia. He explains all of this and more. Enjoy the interview. Well, hey, Chris, thank you for taking a minute out. Where are you in the world right now? I'm in freezing Belfast in Ireland at the minute. Where are you guys? I'm in Kansas City, Missouri in the med- middle of America. Pretty cool, pretty cool at the moment as well, probably, isn't it? Yeah, we're, uh, we're slipping into fall here. Well, hey, man, it's great to catch up with you. Thanks for taking a minute out. And I am, I'm going to start everything off here as the world kind of cools down and we're getting out of COVID. I'm curious, how did you survive COVID and how did that time change you? Well, in Ireland, I feel that COVID is very much a... Um what do you call it, class? It's a class problem. I think the likes of myself, I had a nice house uh, not far out of Belfast in the country by the sea. We were able to cope with it quite well, as uh, a garden and so on. I find, I think with other people living in flats and apartments and small houses, it was much more difficult. Uh, There's some parts that I quite enjoyed. I was able to finish reading, writing my book and tidy up a lot of things I've been meaning to do for years and never had the time, you know, or at least time quite successfully. So I feel a bit that we cheated a little bit because it wasn't as disastrous as it was for a lot of people. Yeah, and, and I think that it, it did fluctuate for a lot of people. Um, so you have an interesting story here. You're like uh, you're like a free spirit with wanderlust. <laughs> well, it used to be. I started rediscovering myself. When I was 21, I decided to ride a motorbike to Australia. And uh, everything went wrong. It was just before the, Amer- the Iranian Revolution in 1979, whenever they took over the American embassy in Tehran. I'd already just left home and started heading east. I had to reroute, give up, give up that ambition, and ended up riding across Africa, the Middle East, down to Africa, down to South Africa. I sailed in the sailing boat back to Europe and then sent the bike over to the States, rode around the States for six months. Worked for a bit and then went down to South America. So it was a bit like the Irish ship, the guy who left to go to Australia and ended up in Argentina. <laughs> and as I say, I wrote a book called Going the Wrong Way just after COVID or through COVID, finished off with COVID uh, because I realized, well, things have changed so much over the years. Um, it was riding motorbikes around the place, adventure motorcycle riding, quite friendly now as Ian McGregor and Charlie Borman did their sort of trip and I thought I could really tell my story about what it was like before uh, the internet, before Booking.com and Facebook got involved. So um, I published a book and a friend of mine read it, was quite impressed and he said well you still never got to Australia, what about having another go? So so spent COVID so uh, they have the second COVID so planning that and uh, I still had the original motorcycle I went on and sort of been snuck in my garage taking it out for bits and tourist trips here and there so I decided it'd be cool to take the original bike again and then we'd take a new bike so we'd compare he's, he's a bit younger than me too so we'd compare the, the old and the new together so uh, that was just over a year ago and COVID was still in the in the trenches, as it were, there were COVID restrictions around Europe and around, around the world. Um, held us back a bit. Mm-hmm. It's just before the, the left off September, so it's just before the last part of it last, last year. Um, but it didn't stop us much to get through, and the bike just arrived in Australia today, funny enough. You know, you talk about doing this prior to this modern day. What were some of the takeaways when you when you did this trip and went around all of these different parts of the world. What 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 was it that really stands out to you that taught you the most, that, that made you understand life in a better way? 
I guess it's probably the uh, contrast between life in the West, Europe, and America, wherever, and the likes of Africa, where probably the biggest contrast in those days, anyway, was uh, so much we take for granted in health and, and infrastructure. Um, was the roads and what well, was like actually traveling across the country with no roads with, or with a dirt track? It would take you a week to do a trip. It would take you an afternoon to do with a, with our sort of road system. Uh, but health wise as well, um, you're actually going hungry, actually going thirsty. You know, you was sort of sort of a saying we want starving and dying of thirst. But actually, when you actually feel that you're hungry. Most of us, sensation most of us actually never get to feel. So it's a bit of an eye opener from the physical uh, side of things like that, you know. Certainly in Africa it was. Um, and in South America, some of the dodgier spots in Africa, the, the fear and uncertainty of what can happen in life. Um, rocks you a bit, shakes you off your, uh, your social well being. We're so used to as well that everything's. Everything's safe, everything's safe, everything's set out, everything's been tight, tried and tested. When you're sitting out in somewhere, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what the reaction's going to be when you get there. It's a, it's a great eye-opener. So I'm curious to know what, like, what your vocation is or has been. So let me take you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day, and one of the kids looks up at you and says, what do you do for a living? How would you answer them? Well, it's a bit of a tricky one because I've done several things. Um, probably one of my differences that, uh, well, one of the effects that the traveling might had on me was I was never quite happy with what I was doing for, for too long. Uh, itchy feet or whatever you want to say. The careers teachers, the, the, my daughter's 15, she's thinking about what she will do. And there's a tendency for kids to think, well, this is what's going to, what I do is going to be for the rest of my life. You know, and certainly some vocations are like that. If you didn't met some your dentistry or something like that, you're tra- training for so long to do a particular job. But really, you don't have to. You know, a, a job shouldn't be something that you have to do for the rest of your life. It's a bit of a, a depressing thought that you're going to do the same thing once you leave school. You're going to do the same thing forever until you retire. So I have done a number of things. I ended up sort of in a family furniture shop doing retail furniture, transferred into property development. Then um, I thought it with me back in 2009. I ended up living in Dubai selling, making mobile apps for three years. So I've had quite a, a very career in, in my life. Um, I'm now 64, sort of winding down a bit. But I, would never, I never want to actually retire. I think once you retire, you're giving things up. You're... You need to keep your brain active, you need to keep your body active, you need to keep working to some extent. So, when you were a kid, what was your dream growing up? What did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be an astronaut of space now, or a pilot, all the rest of the usual sort of kid stuff for boys. Uh, but through parental pressure and peer pressure and um, working Saturdays and part time, I started off working in the family business, as I said, selling furniture. So, it's when you when your parents have a family business, they're second, third generation. There is a well, you could call it an insidious uh, draw for you to go down that road. As I say, it's, you don't see it happening. You start off when you were 13, 14, working part time to earn your pocket money. Then you start working a bit more summers and holidays. And the next thing you know, you're that's your your career direction made for you, which. Well, it sounds a bit depressing thinking like that, but it's not so bad because once you, if you are running your own business, you then can decide what direction to take it yourself. Um, it was a first small family business in Belfast, so I was able to expand it into Dublin and London and eventually get into the property world. It was sort of not written in stone for me, but it was certainly a difficult direction for me to get away from. But I was able to turn it into a... Uh, do what I wanted with it as as I got older anyway so I was happy enough with it so talk to me a little bit about who have been like role models or heroes for you in your life 
I can also like Richard Branson's got a standout for people who've done their own thing um, and gone through business in a different direction. That's not, not your normal um, sort of traditional to stamp career. Um, my book's called Going the Wrong Way, and it, the reason I got that it came up with that name is obviously I went to the wrong countries, I went to the wrong direction. But I generally have, I've maybe started thinking about it, started writing about it, and started thinking what I've been doing since then. I have generally gone the wrong, picked very often, picked the, the wrong, or the not the standard way of doing things. Um, I've always found the challenge can be more exciting than the actual the, the end results. As I say, the journey is the journey of the destination so that's important sometimes it's more interested to learn how to do some, something and develop yourself and develop what it is you're doing or building or or creating whatever rather than the, than the standard day-to-day treasury of doing the same thing over and over again so if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now is there someone you would like to meet and talk to for a little bit um, probably as I said, like Sir Richard Branson or um, um, you know, Musk's got to be up there somewhere, I guess, as well these days. In me, for good or for bad. Yeah, for sure. So, as a as an author, what what's been a book for you? What was a book for you early on in life that you loved that you might return to, or really had a profound effect on the way that you write yourself, or the way that you love to read? Well, as far as writers concerned, it's probably Hemingway's one of the was one of my favorites because his style of writing is very unusual. It's quite direct and to the point and doesn't follow this sort of um, floral, sorry, descriptive manner that some people do write. Um, I'm not your standard author. I've failed my level English. I'm still finding straight through basic sort of standard. Um, I've never been. Um, an example, I suppose, of it's, nobody could say you shouldn't do this because you can't do that. I'm probably the last person you would have to thought would write a book. Um, and it's a book that's got nearly a thousand five star reviews in a couple of years, so it's going very well. So, um, you know, it's a good, it's been a fairly good example of just being very good at school at something. It doesn't mean you can't do it, it's just more a matter that you weren't sent in the right direction, you didn't have the right teachers, or a person probably just too mature to do whatever, just to not fit in properly at school. Uh, again, from a career's point of view, people think they're coming out of school, they think, well, it's, I haven't been very, didn't succeed there, I haven't been very intellectually minded, I'm going to have to go down a particular route because of that, but really, you, know, you can change direction in your life at any time, you shouldn't be stuck with uh, to me open preconceptions. So you've gotten, this book's gotten a lot of really good reviews and attention, and I'm curious, what's been your best fan letter, best response to this book? Um, it's got to be one I got from a guy in England who was, uh, he'd read of his son, his son was in hospital, he had a spinal problem, but he was under a lot of pain, and he was going through a long, longish number of uh, surgeries. I wrote to say that the book had actually given the, the, the two of them great inspiration and, and help going through their the problems he was going through physically and medically. Um, because my book is a, well, it's a story of connection of, of things that got, went wrong and problems I had and things I had to resolve and so on. So it was, it was lovely to hear that I actually was able to inspire somebody to give them help to get over a, an illness like that. If you have a dream tonight and you run into your younger version, say in your 20s, and you could give that version a piece of advice based on what you've lived through, what the wisdom you've gained over all these years, what would you tell your young version? Don't believe what your teachers and your masters have told you to. Go, go your own way, do what you want to do, and um, live your life the best way you can rather than um, following the, the curve, following the grave that everybody's told you to do. I was probably brought up in a fairly conservative family, from a conservative middle class um, thought process. So 
um, it really took me when I was 21 and getting away from home, getting away from everything, and getting away from Europe to really evolve myself into the person I ended up being, I think. Everyone out there has a perception of you, your family, your friends, those that buy your book. But ultimately, you're the one that's living your life. You have a perception of who you are. Who do you think you are? Um, I'm a lucky guy. You know, I've made a lot, of, a lot of things that I shouldn't have done. I've made a lot of mistakes. And I've, I've, I've come out as a model right. You know, I've done, been reasonably successful. Some of my mistakes have cost me a lot of money, cost me a lot of risks and... Um, uh, thinking back, I have been very lucky, um, which is not a great advice to give to somebody because everybody's not lucky. But I think you do make your own luck as you go along as well. You're having a positive attitude and having a, a drive to go ahead that generates your own luck. Where can anybody out there that's listening right now pick up a copy of Going the Wrong Way or learn more about you, anything that you're doing in your life? Well, it's on that. People would have to hate Amazon. Uh, it's on Amazon as an ebook, an audiobook, and a paperback all over the place, all over the world. Going the wrong way by Chris Donaldson. Um, and as I say, it was 43 years ago I left Belfast to go to Australia, and today my bike arrived. So I maybe have to do another follow up story following that. Uh, it's been an interesting journey going through the Middle East, going through Iran and Pakistan and India and seeing what's happened in the world in the last 40 years. Especially Iran, I suppose, uh, whenever you consider it's 40 years ago, it's 43 years ago that the revolution stopped me in my tracks at that stage. And 43 years later, there's another revolution going on there now. Yeah, that's fascinating. It is fascinating. Your book's fascinating. Chris, thank you for opening up. Thanks for taking some time out. Good luck with everything. And I look forward to seeing what comes out next. Thanks very much, Joe. Talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, business, spirituality, and music from around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. <music>